here's the Maple TA login page that you'll be taken to when you click on the quiz link. Don't worry so much about the URL up here, but you will be taken to the correct URL when you click on the link. For the login, you enter your student number. So if my student number is 987654321, I simply enter that and I enter my student number again for the password. This is a very important point. The password here is not your network password, although you're able to change it later, but currently it's set to your student number. So again, just to be clear, you're entering your student number twice, once for the login, once again for the password. So if we click login, we're taken to a list of all of the courses we have access to. So you should see pre-calculus practice for your current academic year. If we click on this, you'll see a list of all the available assignments. You'll see what your best score so far is, how many attempts you've made at it, when it's available. And if you click on policies, you'll see information about how long you have to complete the assignment, so the duration of any timed assignments, and so on. Let's go ahead and click on the first one, functions. We'll be warned it's a timed assignment, so this particular one has 60 minutes, which you can check under policies. If we click OK, the assignment opens up. So for the first question, it's multiple choice. You'll notice in orange information directing you to additional help if you're stuck. So which text files and mini clips in the pre-calculus resources you might want to check out. Let's go ahead for this one and answer an incorrect answer so that we can see what happens when you select an incorrect answer for a multiple choice question because the grading might be a little tricky to figure out at first. So if we click grade question at the bottom, you'll see that indeed it's incorrect. And you'll notice two X's here. So this is what I wanted to clarify. What's going on is not that both of these answers are wrong. It's our choice to select them or not is wrong. So in this case, y element of the real numbers was not selected, and that's a mistake, meaning it should have been selected. Similarly, y not equal to 0 was selected, and that's a mistake, which means it should not have. So in this case, the correct answer is just y is a real number. That is the one we should have selected. The reason it marks the way it does like this is because for some questions there will be more than one correct answer, so this will allow you to see more clearly which ones should have been selected. In the comments section, you'll see some sort of explanation as to the solution, or in some cases, a fully worked out solution to help you understand how to do the question. In the top left here, you'll see a progress report of your progress through the test. You can think of the three question groups as sort of easier, medium, and harder questions. So we'll have three easier, four medium, and two harder ones to complete here. Let's go ahead and click Next to be taken to the next question. So in this case, we've got a true-false question. Let's go ahead and answer this one correctly. So if we click True and grade the question, we'll see that is correct. We will see a fully worked out solution, and we'll see in our progress report that we have indeed made more progress towards mastery. So we've now gotten one out of the three easier questions that we need to answer correct. We can click Next again. This time we get a fill in the blank question. So for these ones, you'll note that there's instructions given on how to enter your answer. This is very important to read carefully to make sure that you know what type of answer is being expected. So are you supposed to answer f of 2 equals or y equals or just the number? Here we're told to answer just the number. I'm just going to answer any old answer here. If we grade the question, we'll see in fact that the answer we answered was 3. The correct answer should have been 10 and again a solution on how to obtain that. Now I'm not going to complete the whole test, so once I'm done I can click on Finish Session. I will see a summary of all of the questions I completed, uh, correctly, incorrectly, what percent of the test I've answered. I can go to View Details and then I'll see all of the various questions I've answered as well as the full solutions. Once you're done, you can click on Quit and Save. And remember not to do that until you've actually finished the test, though, because clicking Finish Session is what actually makes sure that your grade is submitted. Now, these ones are not for grades, but again, if you want to be able to access the details and see how you did and what the solutions were, you want to finish the session first before clicking the Quit and Save. Otherwise, the Quit and Save would just assume you're going to return to the test, but then the timer would run out. So that's why it's important to finish the session first. Anyways, once you've clicked Quit and Save, you're back to the screen with other assignments that you're now able to take if you'd like, 
or once you're completely done, you can click log out at the top right and now you can close your browser window and continue working through other pre-calculus resources if you'd like.